Good afternoon and welcome to Earthing Live. We will get started here in just a few minutes. Please have your questions ready as we will be answering them live on this webinar. If you're just joining us, we will get started with our Earthing Live segment in just a few minutes. Good afternoon, Earthing Live will start in just about two minutes. So sit tight and get your questions ready. Thank you.
Hello, everyone, and welcome to Earthing Live, where we answer your questions about earthing and grounding. We meet weekly right here on this webinar at 3.30 p.m. every Monday. Before we get started, um, just a reminder that anything we talk about here is not meant to replace the advice of your doctor or your healthcare practitioner. Please always consult with your healthcare provider before making any adjustments to your medication or recommended health routine. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am joined as always with Clint Ober, our founder, CEO, over here at earthing.com. We are broadcasting on Zoom, Facebook, YouTube. My customer service department is here as always helping me out. But if you have any general customer service questions like tracking your order, how to place an order, you can contact them at help at earthing.com. You can also visit our website, earthing.com. You can chat with our customer service department, uh, check out our FAQs, all kinds of good resources over there. If you would like to submit a question, you can do so using the Q&A feature of this Zoom webinar. You can also submit your questions in the comment section of YouTube and Facebook, and those will get to me. Now I'd like to introduce Clint Ober, as I said earlier, he is our founder and CEO. He's been working for over 25 years to ground as many people as he can to explore the health benefits of earthing, to spread the word of earthing, to educate about earthing and grounding and the importance of reconnecting with the earth. Welcome. Thank you, Jennifer. <clears throat> Glad to be here as always. How are you doing today? Um, pretty good. I got a little hoarseness in my voice from doing webcasts and podcasts, but I'll be okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and um, jump right in. This first question is from Allison. Is it too much to wear a patch on the bottom of your foot at night, along with sleeping on a bed mat and a pillow? I feel like the patch is really helpful. Uh, we have lots of people that I've heard, you know, and, and I often recommend the, to sleep with the patch on the bottom of the foot or the bottom of both feet because that replicates standing barefoot in nature and it's very natural. But uh, a lot of people get significant benefits from uh, putting the patches on their bottom of their feet during sleep. Um, <clears throat> and again, some people sleep with patches in the palm of their hand. And so what I tell everybody is wherever your issues are, if it's the right side, upper half, use your right hand right foot, left foot, left, whatever, you know, closest to, to, your, uh, to your pain, but it's definitely a, a, a significant uh, way to improve your sleep. Very good. Bren is asking, have you had any results or testimonies applying a patch to breast cancer tumor and experiencing shrinkage? Um, well, I do, but I don't know that it's something I can, I, I can touch on it. Basically up in, uh, um, the Bay area, San Marino or Marin County, I guess it was, there was a, a study done up there back in, this is back in about 2000. And <clears throat> there was a group of, uh, they were doing a lot of issues with, um, breast cancer research back then. And, uh, I, again, I, They've never let us make this study public yet, but but basically we did, what we saw is people who were in stage one, two, three, uh, they would put patches right in the area where the vascular supply was feeding the tumor and they had significant, uh, that's all I can say is significant results. And then some of the people who were stage four and it had gone too far, uh, there were some other issues, but compliance was the biggest issue with that study, getting people to sleep with patches back in those days. <laughs> but uh, if whoever's asking this question probably already knows the answer. Okay. Marianne has a question um, about using our auto seat maps. Do uh -huh. grounding pads in an electric vehicle help with EMF? <clears throat> no, because you're, you're only connected to the metal in the 
vehicle. But the, you know, I've never measured the uh, electric fields or the magnetic fields, but like in a regular automobile, uh, your bigger issue is the engine turning and that's creating a huge magnetic field. And I think that would be true also of the uh, of turbines and the electric cars. So I don't know that the electric field would be any more significant. I haven't measured it, but uh, I don't, the reason you have the seat, the auto seat mat is to reduce the static charge on your body, which creates tension in the body. Uh, but as far as, uh, no, I, I, that's as far as I can go with that. Okay. Uh, we have some great questions today. I'm just quickly scanning through what's come through already. So this, oh, is, good. this is good. Yeah. Good. Um, so Jennifer is asking, can earthing help with sickle cell disease and how? Um, <clears throat> we have had some information on that or feedback over the years, and I don't recall uh, the actual details, but I know there's an improvement because it, your grounding improves blood. Um, so, uh, and I, I just don't know the answers on this, but anybody who has any kind of a health disorder, especially a blood health disorder, the number one thing the grounding does is when you ground that it increases the negative surface charge on the red blood cells <clears throat> and that causes them to repel each other and then they can get in and out of the capillaries and all, all of that. Um, <clears throat> but, it, but you're gonna have healthier blood cells under any circumstances uh, if you're grounded. If, uh, based on the research that we have done to date, uh, which Dr. Sinatra and a few others have been involved in. Very good. Harry is asking, what is the lifespan of a pillowcase and a mattress bag? The, the new pillowcase, uh, if you're going to put it in a pillowcase, you're, if it's a pillow cover, you put the pillow in it and put a pillowcase over it, it'll probably last your, you know, forever. <clears throat> and the same with the sleep mats. If you put them under the sheets uh, and sleep on them, they'll probably last forever. You know, like a, a good mattress pad. I mean, it's kind of hard to, uh, to to harm them. If you sleep directly on them, uh, which a lot of people do, and I highly recommend it, uh, we don't know for sure. Uh, but <clears throat> we do know that the oil will build up a little bit and you have to wipe the oil down. The oil, the, the body oil itself won't harm the carbon. The silver, it kind of destroyed the silver, but the carbon. Uh, so <clears throat> as far as I know, as long as we just wipe it down with a damp rag occasionally, um, I would think it would be no, last the same period of time that a, a leatherette couch or a leatherette chair, rocking chair. Uh, so it's, anyhow, it should outlast your mattress. If that's, what we've been, that's what we've been suggesting because we have had this product, similar products in use, um, in, in zero gravity chairs for over five years and they get lots of use. They get beat up worse than anything, but we've had them out for probably more than five years now mm -hmm. at the um, resorts and the spas. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, Russell is asking if it's safe to go earthing. It says to do earthing during a thunderstorm. So I'm sure he's assuming uh, using our products during a thunderstorm as you wouldn't want to be outside. <clears throat> Uh, if there's a thunderstorm and there's lightning and you can hear lightning, you do not want to be outside under any circumstances. Uh, and you can count the seconds. That's how many miles away it is. And um, you can tell whether it's coming or going and those kind of things. But basically, you don't want to do that. As far as grounding, um, your grounding products, if lightning were to hit your home and um, energize the ground system, uh, which would, would be a millimeter of a second. Uh, <clears throat> during that time, if there was any feedback to the ground system where the earth and products are connected, it would melt the wire within a micro, you know, within a few millimeters of where the cord is because that's a very fine cord or fine conductive. And it's, it's kind of, a, it's not, you know, I, I guess maybe it was designed that way, but anyhow, <clears throat> and then beyond that, you have a hundred K resistor uh, at the plug end of the cord. And so if you have any concerns, I would recommend you just unplug the, your, your earthing products. Uh, if you're in a very high lightning prone area, you know, like next to a golf course in Florida, 
then I'd be concerned. But it's like in the United States, I think they have three or 400 people a year hit by lightning. And they have about 60 people a year that die from lightning strikes. And so the odds are not high unless you're in a very high uh, swing on a golf club in a Florida, Florida golf course is the highest area. So, but for sure, it's really just use your own good judgment. Very good. Judy's question. Um, has anybody else found using an earthing band brings in more voltage than without unless a sensor meter is installed? No, this is not possible, but um, I don't, <clears throat> the only thing I can say about the Stetzer filters, I think there is a paper or two on the um, Earthing Institute website where, where they're talking about them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of papers that have been put out by Health Canada and a few others. The problem with the Stetzer filter, basically what it does is <clears throat> you put it on the line and it's a capacitor and most people may not know what that is. But anyhow, so when you run something through a capacitor, the current stops at the capacitor, but the electrons that are stored on the capacitor will push on down and you know, drive a refrigerator or whatever. So what they're doing is they're squeezing down the any ambient noise that's in there or um, transients and then increasing the but, but you're not changing the electric field. You're changing some of the frequency in the electric field. But if you squeeze down the high frequency, it'll come out as uh, 60 hertz frequency because you have a certain amount of energy. You can't just stop it. it just, you can't take it away. All you can do is squeeze it, put a choke on it. You can do all these things. But <clears throat> anyhow, the Stetzer filter would not, if you were grounded and it went up, then it's because... I don't know what the Stetzer meter really is, but uh, other than it's, uh, I think to measure spikes, <clears throat> transients from a refrigerator. Um, but if anytime you're grounded, it's like there was somebody on last time. If you're grounded, then the electric fields are gonna bounce off you. So you have an electric field coming at you and an electric field going away. So you're gonna have a 50% increase in the uh, electric field near the body you know, as the closer it is to the body. And there's a little null field between the body and the frequent and the environmental electric field. Uh, if you wanna go, if this, if somebody wants to go into this in detail that we can get Gaetan on and have him explain it because he's the expert and who has written all the papers on this and worked with the Health Canada groups and so on. Okay. I just want to um, remind everybody, if you have a question, please submit them in the Q&A section on Zoom. If you submit them in the chat section, I will not see those. I think we have a lot of activity over there in the chat section. Just go ahead and put those in the Q&A section. Okay. Facebook and YouTube, uh, just put your questions right there in the comment section. Mm -hmm. um, Abby says, do you feel the earthing patches have benefits over natural grounding since you can place them directly in areas of pain and hard to reach places? Uh, absolutely, that's why we developed them because a lot of people, they can sleep grounded and so on. But if they have an acute injury or trauma of some kind, uh, uh, an arthritic flare, lupus, MS flare, anything that flares, <clears throat> Uh, you can put a patch right next to it and reduce the flare rather quickly, reduce the pain, put out the fire, then the body can try to recover, I mean, recover return things to normal. But yeah, the patch is for uh, localized grounding uh, for anywhere there's pain. If you have pain, you have a fire and the patch, put the patch on, it's like pouring water on a fire. Good. Lori, if only doing the minimum amount of earthing per day. Do you need to do all 30 minutes at once or can you break it up and still get results? Um, <clears throat> it's like I, you know, 30, if 30 minutes is all you can do, uh, then I would probably do it before sleep. And the reason is because you can take, you drain a lot of the inflammation and stress out of your body. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to sleep, then your immune system doesn't have to fight all the inflammation in your body and it can help restore, uh, refresh and restore 
the normal functioning of the body. Here's a question from a YouTube viewer regarding the mat. Does it have to be the bottoms of my feet or will it be just as effective touching the sides of me, my feet? For example, when I'm lying down. Okay. <clears throat> when you're lying down um, and you have your body touching, the, the most conductive parts of your body are your feet and your hands. And if you're standing on the earth outdoors and you've got 100 pounds or 150 pounds of weight, that's a pretty good connection. So what we have done, uh, the earth has a lot of resistance, uh, just like your skin has a lot of resistance. So uh, when you, <clears throat> when we put a rod in the earth and we bring those electrons and give them to you in the, in a, in the form of a carbon-based ground plane, then <clears throat> you have a, uh, you know, a, uh, a known contact, a known uh, amount of electrons that would be the same as uh, in the earth below the grass. So when you lay on it, there's two things that are happening. One, if your skin is touching it or you're perspiring and your clothes are, your night clothes are becoming hydrated, then <clears throat> electrons are going to migrate from the pad into your body, no matter whether your feet are touching it or whatever. Uh, and then your blood, as, your, as it normalizes blood viscosity, the blood, uh, <clears throat> you'll have improved circulation and the electrons will get there just via the blood. Um, because <clears throat> your blood cycles once a minute. Um, so um, go back to, <laughs> I got sidetracked with the blood. <laughs> Having the uh, mat touch the sides of the feet. Okay, right. So yeah, I think the, that'll, yes, it'll ground just as well. You're not gonna be able to stand, and I've had many people call, that I can't sleep grounded because I can't keep my feet up in the air all night. Well, mm -hmm. that's not what it's designed for. It's like it's designed to go out there and lay on the grass. That's what we're trying to do with the grounding sleep products and the grounded pillow. Very good. Which, which have profound results. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see here. Do you have evidence of longer lifespan of red blood cells on earthing? And if so, how much? Um, I don't know. I don't think we have that kind of research. The main thing is you have larger blood cells after a while. I mean, it's just a normal amount of healthy blood cells. Um, I know we have talked about it. We've looked at it, but I don't recall exactly. But <clears throat> anytime you reduce inflammation in the body, you're going to improve the white blood cells because they don't have to work as hard putting out inflammation and handling problems. Uh, I don't have an answer for this. I, I can, if we want to take this person's name down, we can send a note to Gaetan or to Dr. Elkin mm -hmm. or somebody, even, or Dr. Sinatra. They're all cardiologists. Okay. They work, they ground a lot of patients, have done studies. Very good. Okay. Ben is asking, is anyone else reporting normal but vibrant dreams while using the pillow pad at night? I would imagine that's one of the number one things we hear just sleeping on the mattress pad also. The number one thing is you have more vivid dreams, which means you're getting into deeper uh, stages of sleep. Mm -hmm the actual content of the dreams that has to do with your own personal life, I think. <laughs> All right, we have a question here um, about breast cancer. This person is currently trying natural therapies and loses conventional treatment. They realize they might have to reevaluate things in the future. Um, she says, I'm thankful to have recently learned about the health benefits of earthing and I've added this to my holistic protocol. I was hoping Mr. Ober could offer some words of encouragement in regard to earthing and cancer. Uh, are there any practical recommendations with regard that would be most appreciated? Okay, I don't like to address cancer too much in the sense that other than in general, um, because people who are, you know, are experiencing cancer, you know, it's, um, you're, you're in a stress state and you're, 
you know, it's, so I don't want to create any undue fear or any undue hope. So what I want to do is be real honest with it. Basically, what we have learned and what I've learned over the last 23, 25 years is <clears throat> cancer is an inflammation related health disorder. Mm -hmm. You don't just get cancer. You, you have a pocket of inflammation uh, in the body and then the cells inside of it differentiate from the cells in the immediate area. And then all of a sudden they, <clears throat> you have what's considered a parasite, you know, inside of that pocket of inflammation. And it's, there's any named number, uh, any number of named cancers, <clears throat> which are kind of routine on, in different uh, kinds of uh, breast cancer, breast issues and so on, and other issues. <clears throat> so the number one, back when I have a lot of experience with breast cancer, but, um, <clears throat> And I lost somebody very dear to breast cancer. But anyhow, the, um, the thing that uh, 20 years ago, nobody had ever heard of the word inflammation. If you ask somebody what caused uh, arthritis, they, they would say cause unknown. If you ask somebody what caused cancer, they would say cause unknown. They didn't know. And even today in the literature, um, <clears throat> if you look for what is the cause of MS, cause unknown, they do not know. Uh, in 2004, uh, Ritger and the boys back at Boston, Mass, came out with a paper and, you know, describing you don't have cancer, you don't have all of these health disorders, you don't have these named health disorders. What you have is chronic inflammation in your body, and it manifests differently in different people because of their genetics or because of their lifestyle and their environment. So depending on how you live, depending on what you eat, what you you know, your lifestyle, whether you exercise, whether you eat good food or bad food or smoke, all these things are, they can play a role in this. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> the, uh, but the point of this study was you have to have inflammation first because inflammation is, is, is a misnomer because really what it's saying is your immune system is producing uh, reactive oxygen species more than the Redox, re, then the redox potential of the body. The body doesn't have enough re, uh, elect, uh, you know, electrons to reduce those free radicals in a timely manner. So they end up stealing electrons from adjacent tissue cells, damaging them. And that's what starts the fire of inflammation. Uh, and that's where the word, the body in flame comes from inflammation. The body is on fire, like burning a log. So <clears throat> anyhow, the number one protocol that I, when I was working with this one person who was going through this, uh, <clears throat> they said the number one protocol is to reduce inflammation. And this was in uh, about 20, uh, 2006 in that time frame, 2006. And <clears throat> so that came in after the, the Ritker group came out. So there's lots of ideas. I mean, there's lots of uh, information on this, you can just Google inflammation and cancer and find out a lot more than I can tell you. And so, <clears throat> so anything you can do, so what you're doing when you reduce inflammation in your body is you're shutting down the fire, you're putting the fire out. That's what grounding does, that's what the electrons do. That's what eating good food does. And <clears throat> so as soon as that fire is out and when you ground yourself, and especially with patches, and maybe you want, you know, I'll go on on that later, but anyhow, uh, especially with patches, you're going to put that fire out more quickly. And as soon as the fire is out, then the immune system gets a big breath of fresh air. Then it can go and start cleaning up the damage that was created by the inflammation that it itself was creating, but it didn't know it wasn't grounded anymore. It just wasn't in contact with the earth anymore. So <clears throat> you shut down the inflammation, the immune system can come back. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to try to repair all of the damage that was done. And that's when you get the flu feelings and, and the die-offs and some of that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden you start sleeping better, your energy starts coming up, your color is better, um, your circulation is significantly improved. Then the body can go back and restore, start restoring the, you know, the normal function of, uh, returning the body to normal. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> health is, the word health means that this is a body that is, you know, health. It has no, it's not sick. 
So, <clears throat> so the only thing the immune system does is it, restore, it returns the body, it restores the body to health. <clears throat> and if, and if you, it is not restoring the body to health, then something you're doing something is interfering with your immune system's ability to be able to do that. So <clears throat> I can tell you what I would do, but you have to use good judgment. You, when you say you are doing this on your own with alternative, that's fine. Uh, but I would certainly be seeing an oncologist because this is routine stuff now. There's a lot of advancements in cancer treatment and so on. But <clears throat> the thing that will that I have seen the most results with is put a tumor on the area where the uh, angiogenesis is occurring, where the blood vessels are feeding the tumor. Okay. And I can't guarantee you anything. Only you would be able to know the results. I'll leave that from here. I, I, I don't wanna be making a diagnosis and recommending things. I'm just saying, based on all my experience, this is what I've seen done a lot. This is what works uh, for some people. And I just, I, I, beyond that, please get in, uh, find an oncologist and at least get a routine uh, connection going. If alternative helps, great, they'll tell you. <laughs> right. Okay, we are going to try something here that we haven't done before on Earthing Life. We are going to bring on one of our customers who has had um, a success story with Earthing and we're going to hear a little bit about their uh, experience with earthing, what their, you know, what products they use, how that all works out. So if we can go ahead and get him added. Let's see. Just bear with us one second while we get, ah, yes. Uh, hello, Chad. You can go ahead and, un there we go, hello. How are you doing? I'm well, how are you? Good, good. I'm wondering, do I need to close this behind me? It looks, I've got like my angelic uh, light behind me. Don't. Two brighter, is that okay? we, we like we angels. Can see you. Okay. Yeah. I don't, my halo's over here. So <laughs> put it on if need be, but uh, yeah, I just, I always forget. It's not very bright. It's funny, but once it shows up on camera, it's like there's a spotlight behind me, so. It's okay. Of course, yeah. All right. How are you today? Thank you for joining I'm, us. I'm doing really well. Thank you for having me. So uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, just tell us a little bit about what challenges you were experiencing uh, before you started earthing. So I think it actually comes from a slightly different perspective for me. Mm -hmm. um, I have this like uh, journey of health of always, how can I improve things? Um, I was not the healthiest kid growing up. And, um, you know, Clint, when you talked about uh, breast cancer, my mom had breast cancer, her, my stepfather, he died the same year had uh, cancer and he died. Um, I, my, Sorry about that. It's, it's been a long time, but thank you. Um, uh, she's still, she's, she's doing fine. So 11 years later, um, and I, I was a teacher and several kids had cancer and it was one of those things where it was like, what's going on here? You know? So I, I kind of started down the path of health and, um, really a big part of it is always, what are the things that I can add? Because I know that there's not just, you do this and you're gonna be healthy for the rest of your life because there's mm -hmm. such an ebb and flow of, you know, if you try to do something healthy, but then you eat junk food, uh, you know, it's gonna pull back and forth. Um, so fast forward to earthing, I think that's something or grounding that, you know, I've known about for however long and I knew, you know, it's good to get out there in the, um, in the grass and so forth. And, you know, as a, I, I'm a triathlete as well as whatever else I do, but uh, that's one of the main things. And I know cool. that I to flip those shoes off and get my feet to just move because shoes for a number of reasons are horrible for your feet. Um, so uh, it was, I think a podcast with Clint where I was listening to it and, you know, not that this comes across as kind of a, a woo woo new age type of thing, but it was once I heard the one thing that talked about the inflammation, lowering the inflammation, um, that, that perked me up real fast because the reason I mentioned the triathlon is that it's something where I train about 15 to 18 hours a week. So I'm causing inflammation intentionally. Um, well, it's not something I want, but obviously through all that. So it's, it's how do I do something where I'm able to consistently train 
and recover just as quickly because it's not about doing some massive effort, but it's about having a consistent effort and to be able to go back and forth with it um, and then apply that to general health. So um, I started off with, I think the small, I don't know if there's a name to it, but like the one by two foot mats, you know, just say, okay, let's see how this works. And then I went to the, um, the pads or the patches and mm -hmm. I started doing the patches at night. The only thing I was afraid of was getting up in the middle of the night and tripping over the cords. So yeah. I was like, all right, I'm in, I'm doing this thing. And we went and um, we got the, uh, uh, the mattress cover and the pillows. Um, I kind of have to say the pillow hasn't been affected because my dog decides to sleep on it. I have a small dog and I said, I wake up and he's like curled up on my pillow. And I'm like, Hey, he's everything too. So that's, that's very common. We hear that all the time about, uh, our pets, you know, stealing our little earthing products. They love it. It's very, it feels natural for them. That's their well, natural state. And again, those, those pads, um, they're, they're small. Like one, one's about 10 pounds and one's 20 pounds. And we have two of them. And I swear they've been left on the couch and they're both on them. They both have yeah. their own pads. And I thought that's pretty cool. And it reminded yeah. me of the other movie. Is it earthlings? What's the, the, not the grounding movie, but the other one that sort of goes along with it. Uh, there's the earthing movie the one the i want to say it was a guy in alaska made it the grounded the grounded and, and he, he 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 saves uh wild animals and he put mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. in yes the, uh, um uh the shelter and he, he put a grounding mat in there and that's where he found it the next day so um so anyway so i started using those and it's been a while now and i think i even added uh the uh, the armband because i you know due to COVID, I do a lot of my training in the garage, I have a treadmill and so forth. So between the, the, the mattress pad, the, the mats um, that just kind of move around the house and that the band, I'm able to use that pretty much throughout the day. So I'd say about half the day is, is dedicated to being grounded and then any more that's possible. Um, I live very close to the beach. So we generally take the dogs down to the beach and walk barefoot um, as well, which has so many other benefits. And, you know, um, I, my, what I mainly do right now is, is kind of health coaching and teaching people how to breathe. And mm -hmm. a lot of that is helping them to sleep better and, uh, to have a good sleep protocol, which, you know, there's the blue blocking glasses, there's the light in the morning and so forth, but this has been a huge part of it. And it's interesting that you mentioned the dreams because my Michael every day, she's like, I had the weirdest dreams last night or the most vibrant dreams. And when you said that, I thought, okay, that now makes sense. So, you know, again, it was to lower inflammation, to improve sleep, and to just improve overall health. And that has definitely happened. And I know that um, it's a lot of things working together, not just, um, you know, uh, just, just the one thing. So it's hard to tease out what's doing it, but, you know, knowing, you know, I don't know, call me an amateur grounder, knowing what I know, I feel like it's made a huge difference in lowering that inflammation which is, uh, you know, I've heard over and over again is the cause of all diseases or the source of it, if you want to say it that way, has made a huge what are, difference. What are some of those um, things that you've noticed uh, in how you, you know, sleep or feel? Or is there something tangible? You said, oh, wow, that's definitely the something I've noticed, a change. Deeper, and mm -hmm. I don't sleep longer, but I, I believe I sleep better. And when I wake up, it's, um, I'm up, I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, yeah. it's like my cup of coffee. So the quality has improved. And I would say, um, I, I sleep about the same amount of time. Um, sorry, it sounds like one of the dogs is acting up in the background. So the sleep is definitely improved and there's no, there's no afternoon fatigue. Um, so it's, it's good solid energy throughout the day. Um, yeah. My, me personally, from that feeling of, um, I don't want to say pain, but the, the, the feeling of, of, of what training does of like, uh, you know, before it was like, oh, if I have to sit up or stand up or sit down from a chair, I'm going to feel it. And I really don't. Um, most training sessions are much easier now and I recover much faster from them. And I think that's for me, one of the most tangible things, because I was able to see so quickly what a difference it made um, by utilizing these products the way I do. But like I said, I, I, I would say a good 50% of my day is spent grounded. So that's, that's probably one of the bif biggest um, differences for me. Excellent. Excellent. Cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, and we, you know, we, we heard your dog a little bit ago and, and we love hearing those stories about the pets. That's actually why we launched uh, the pet bed. So 
um, maybe for Christmas, your little one can get his own little dedicated uh, bed and then you can get, get your pillow cover back. <laughs> no, he, he thinks everything belongs to him. Well, so, that's you know, pretty typical. He'd, he'd probably go, you can go sleep on that little bed. I'll stay yeah. here on the big bed. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Chad, for taking time out of your day. Yeah, absolutely. And again, thank you for having me. Like I say, that's part of being here is uh, I really, I believe in your product and I think it's really great. So, and I, I, I honestly, I don't know, maybe you guys can give me a job because I certainly tell everybody about it. So um, <laughs> hopefully more people are buying it as a result. Well, we appreciate you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. That was excellent. I love hearing people who have life-changing, you know, life-changing earthing stories. Okay, um, we'll go back to some questions here. We have Anne asking, is it important to always use the safety cube, especially if you just have one to plug in? One earthing product, I think is what she means. Um, you don't have to use the safety cube. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, <clears throat> it's there. The reason we came up and developed that product was a lot of uh, the outlets the spring uh, inside, they get a little loose and then the cords would come out easier, fall out easier. So we created that so you would have a sure ground <clears throat> and then you could also plug in two products at the same time. But no, you don't have to use it. Once you've tested your outlet, whatever works. Okay. Here is a question um, from YouTube. Watcher, is there a difference between wearing EMF protection clothing, such as a hat, and laying or sleeping on a grounded pillowcase? Well, if you're sleeping on a grounded pillowcase and you have a, a hat that is conductive on, then your hat would be also grounded. So, uh, yeah, you'd be well grounded. <clears throat> it wouldn't make any, it would be. If it's con uh, conductive material, then it would be conductive just like the pillowcase. Okay. A Facebook viewer named Wanda has a question. I have one of your mattress pads. It wrinkles up on me every time I get up during the night. I have to straighten it. Is this normal? Mm. I, I don't think so. Um, if, if, if it has the bands on it, it should be under the mattress and that should hold it in place or the corner straps. So I'm not sure what, what the, we have to know more about the product, the actual product that she's sleeping on. If it didn't have bands, it would do that. But um, we need more information. Yeah, Rhonda, I would recommend you contact our customer service department. They are great at troubleshooting yeah. Send a any picture. issues you have. Yeah. They might be able to um, help you out a little bit more. They'll, they'll know the right questions to ask. Okay, uh, Shirley says, after a five year break from continuous exercise routine, and at 49 years old, I began biking 30 minutes a day at high intensity for one week. The second week I added twice a day, and on occasion I rode an hour long until my muscles were crying. I sleep grounded every night and I wake up about 4 a.m., which is usual for me. I have not experienced any soreness to this point. Hopefully I don't jinx myself. Is there any explanation for this? So she uh, doesn't know why she's not more sore. Well, we um, grounded the Tour de, a lot of the members of the Tour de France, a lot of the Tour de France riders for about seven years in a row they, with the U.S. Postal Team, uh, with Team Discovery, and then a lot of those riders went on to different teams, but we grounded them. And that's the number one reason that they use grounding is to prevent the inflammation uh, in their body. So when they, and so on. So anyhow, but beyond before that, or as a result of that, we did a study at the, at the University of Oregon in Eugene, uh, <clears throat> where we had took 20 year old healthy males and had them do a certain type of exercise that would create inflammation in their body to the point that they shouldn't be able to walk in three days. It was called the delayed onset muscle soreness study. It's on the earthinginstitute.net. But anyhow, the subjects who were not grounded, 
were, you know, they were not able to walk in, you know, three days because the inflammation builds and builds and builds. But the individuals who were grounded had a little bit of inflammation, but minor. And um, so, but that's why we've worked with the, so many of the athletes, especially runners, uh, cyclists, and, uh, you know, a, a host of them. But <clears throat> spring training, everything, uh, they all have to go and rebuild the muscles and work out. They get lots of inflammation. They sleep grounded. That way they, they recover faster. They can, uh, we even have weightlifters tell us they can lift five, 10% more weight. In fact, there's mm -hmm. a video of one of them that was a world champ that they can, you know, <clears throat> uh, lift more weight and they, they don't understand it. One is because they don't have inflammation and they have more energy, more ATP. So, so I would go read the study at the earthinginstitute.net, the DOM study, delayed onset muscle soreness study, and that'll give you all your answers. I will put the link to that study in the chat section of this webinar right here. And if you, um, all you have to do is go to the research section at earthinginstitute.net, and it's um, number 19 on the research list. Okay, Donna has a question about um, heart arrhythmias. Can grounding help with PVCs or premature ventricular contraction? Um, <clears throat> that is, uh, we have lots of people telling us that they get significant benefits. And um, we have cardiologists on our board and uh, we've, the answer is yes. The other answer is, uh, depends on your lifestyle, depends on the amount of grounding, depends on the stress in your life um, and, uh, and various other things. <clears throat> but we've had a lot of people uh, uh, report good results from grounding with all kinds of cardiovascular issues. So what I would recommend is to experiment. And uh, it can be, the experiments could be done outdoors in your backyard with your feet on the grass for a half hour at a time and just pay attention if you know what the rhythms are and the routines are, or if you have, you know, little um, um, EKG monitors or anything like that, you can kind of figure that out and see for yourself what's going to help you and help. And, but I can't, I can't say that you do this, it's going to do that. We don't know. It's different on every person based on their age, their lifestyle, their energy. Okay. We are going to go ahead and bring on another person to share their story. We have Antonia standing by. So let's go ahead and get Antonia added here. Okay. I have a... Hi, Antonia. Hi, but do you see me? We do not see you, but we hear you loud and clear. How are you? Are you there? Yes. How are you doing today? Hang on. Oh, I think your video. No. Your... Do I on video or you on video? We cannot see you, but we can hear you. Okay, so I fixed the video. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Clint. Good to see you Hi. again. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, everybody on link Hi. online. Uh, my name's Antonia. I've been using earthing products for a number of years now, thanks to um, the teachers union put me in a program called Inspire where I met Clint and I have my Clint, my water bottle from Inspire. But, That's great. Uh, I've been using the, the products ever since and got wow. them for my family members and for many friends. I've made mm -hmm. sure that they are familiar with earthing and how the products work. Yes. Um, about the late 1990s, I had a uh, emergency surgery and the doctor, um, I was internally bleeding to death. <laughs> My son goes, mom, I got a call. I said, no, honey, women just suffer, you know, just, you know, forget it. And I, I woke up to a house full of um, firemen. Of course, you have to make a joke because that's easy stress. And I said, oh, the things a woman will do to get a house full of attacked young men, not one <laughs> smile. And the guy goes, lady, there's something seriously wrong. So they took me to the hospital oh, no. and they did emergency surgery. And I had about five or six blood transfusions. And um, since then I have encouraged uh, in the system. I don't know where all the healthy blood came from because we always were a healthy eating family. You are what you eat. And I sustained um, a number of death phases. So I know what it's like to be very, very weak 
and close to death. But in 2016 or so, the end of the year, it's 1617, it's kind of blurry for me. I had a blood vessel burst in my eye that was incredibly painful. And the doctor said I had an autoimmune disease and I had two years to live. And I said, well, who are you to tell me I'm dying? What's, you know, where'd you get your medical degree? How dare you take away hope and you know, you have to fight. And I was still pretty, I was probably as loud as I got with them. But um, I started with the earthing products. And uh, if I trip over something small or catch myself, I usually knock a rib out of place. Very painful. So this one morning we were having breakfast in a restaurant with my daughter. And she goes, mom, you're sheet white. What happened? And I thought blood vessels, the capillaries had exploded because my autoimmune condition explodes blood vessels and then you die that, and it's painless. I thought, well, this is a lot of pain. This can't be, <laughs> it can't be the anchor. This is something else. But we went to the hospital and the, the technician took a CT scan. She goes, well, with, with your condition, we have to do CT scan. Are you okay? So we're waiting and waiting. The pain is diminishing. If you ever had a rib pop out, it does that, it goes away. And she comes in and the technician was so enthralled. She wasn't listening to anything. And she brings in the CT scan and she goes, nowhere in the body do you have any inflammation? And I went, oh, I sleep on a grounding mat. Do you see that? Nowhere. Look, people have here, 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 but you have nothing. They clean. I've never seen anything. I sleep on a grounding mat. She's not listening. She's not paying attention. So I realized I had to distract her visually. So I reached to my purse and I always carry a pack of cleansed cards. And I said, I sleep on this. Oh, grounding mat. What's that? It's, look it up. There's a machine. It's called a computer. <laughs> you right here in the office. Look it up. So uh, that was, that was 20, 20, 2020, maybe just recently, 2020, uh, pre-COVID. And um, I was surprised, no inflammation anywhere. How cool is that? So right now I have my, my feet on a grounding mat that I have under my desk. I have the entire bed uh, covered. I have the pillow, I sleep right on it. And every couple of days I take the damp cloth and I wipe everything down. Um, I have a blanket. And when I travel, I use the blanket and the pillow. I have a, a, a since I retired, my family knows, and the, the, the teachers gave me a gift of another grounding pillow. I thought, oh, God, how cool was this? How did you know? And they go, we listen. <laughs> so yeah. they were all from, you know, they had all chipped in to get me this. And I thought that was just spectacular. So that's my travel uh, neck pillow with the blanket when I go places. And um, it's just been really interesting. I know, um, I don't know about the camera, but in person, my colleagues, you can't be retiring now, Dr. V. You're, you're, you're like only 50 some years old. And I said, I'm like half twice your age. Do the math. So well, I'm 40, half twice. 30. So that's, that's 60. I'm 68. I'm almost 70 years old. And they went, no, no. You move around like, like nothing. You move around. You, I move around. I run 10 miles a day and you move around better than I do. And I thought, I don't run 10 miles a day, Mike, but I sleep on a grounding mat. <laughs> yeah. So um, I really support the idea because as he says, no inflammation means no disease. And right. because um, I have uh, open, clear, concise, listen doctor report with my physicians, uh, they're very uh, open with me as well because we have this trust. And they were changing me to another doctor. And I said, doctor, I spent two years training you. Now, what's the deal? I have to go over this again and train a new doctor? And he goes, well, you, you, you didn't die. So we, you're, you didn't die. So you can't be on a, a terminal doctor. I do the terminal patients and we, we moved you off. Oh, <sighs> all right. So as long as I'm prepared and now I have to retrain these other people and how to be and how you use me as a patient, because I'm not ignorant. I'm very intelligent when it comes to my physical health. Um, sometimes I challenge them and they have to go look things up and get back to me. <laughs> it's kind of interesting because I'm just an English teacher, you know, like they say, just an English teacher. I love hearing that. I, being your own health advocate is so important. And, well, I had a sign in my classroom that said, I am in charge of my own learning. And I added to the students, you are also in charge of your own health. And they, we, yeah. we talk about grounding in the classroom. Dr. V, what is that on your table? This, this is a grounding mat. Let me tell you how it works. <laughs> and when you walk outside and play in the snow or in the area, if you have snow or you're outside and playing and fun things, you're, you're grounded and that's why you feel good. Yep. And then you, oh, tell us more. Yep. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Welcome.
Thank you, Antonia. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Have a great day. Oh, that was wonderful. Okay, um, this question is from Ben. Is there any data on grounding and how it affects migraines and or menopause? Well, we have lots of it. I think you can probably go to the Earthing Institute and go into keyword search and type in menopause and uh, um, migraines and find stories. Uh, <clears throat> But the main thing is you have to know what grounding does. I mean, it reduces the blood viscosity. I mean, it improves blood viscosity, normalizes the thickness of the blood, and then it increases the negative surface charge on the blood so it can get in and out of the capillaries. So migraines, I think, are uh, related to stress. I mean, there's something uh, going on. Uh, what I would recommend is to learn the effect that grounding may have for you in these uh, is to go outdoors, spend a half hour at a time with your bare feet on the earth mm -hmm. and just notice the changes, notice the, especially with the headache. And um, yeah, we, that's, did I answer that okay? Yeah, you just have to try, it's a lot of it's trial and error, just trying yeah, it's, to see. It's, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to bring people to the water tank and mm -hmm. you have to do a lot of this on your own because, we just know the mechanics of it, the physics of it. And we know that you can't have inflammation in your body if you were to get grounded and stay grounded. But yeah. most people have a lifestyle. They can only be grounded for a certain number of minutes or hours a day. And that's why we came up with the sleep product so they could sleep during, we could be grounded during sleep. But, <clears throat> but anyhow, so yeah, I would uh, definitely just do some experimentation. Go for a walk in the woods. Okay, Dylan is asking about, um, he says, what is far infrared tech and is that what's happening while grounding? No, uh, far infrared is, you know, heat. Um, <clears throat> it's a frequency that uh, it's gonna penetrate the body and uh, create a heating effect. Uh, grounding, what grounding does <clears throat> is it adds, when you, when you the earth is negative. I hate to use technical terms, but it's the only way I can say it, is <clears throat> the earth is negative, let's say about 20 millivolts. And the word negative means no charge for simplicity. And <clears throat> the reason is because it, it's an abundance of electrons that are free electrons that can rapidly move and, in, you know, and reduce charge. So <clears throat> when you are disconnected from the earth or when you're touching the earth, then your body absorbs electrons from the earth equal to the amount of electrons that are on the surface of the earth. And then all of your red blood cells become more negatively charged. And that's what normalizes blood viscosity. So anyhow, these electrons, your body is flooded with them. And then uh, if the immune system is doing its normal routine of reducing um, pathogens or damaged cells in, in this process, it has to use reactive oxygen species if there are any remainders, then these earth, these free electrons from the earth instantly reduce them and they prevent them from damaging other cells or oxidizing other cells, which is another way, way to say in, uh, inflammation. So <clears throat> infrared is a totally different mechanism. Grounding itself is just, we're doing nothing except returning you back to your natural grounded state as we all were before modern lifestyles and shoes. Dylan is also asking if um, he's protected when, I'm sorry, protected from EMF when grounded. Uh, if you're grounded with a six, your low frequency, 60 hertz type frequencies, that, which you have mostly in your home, yes, you are protected. And there's a study, I mean, there's papers on the Earthing Institute, um, dot net. And you can look up in all this information. There are studies there that explain uh, how EMF works, how the body works when it's grounded. But, but basically, to, for simplicity, when you're connected to the earth, you're grounded to the earth, then you're at the same electrical potential as the earth, but you're a part of the earth, which is infinitely large. 
and you're just like a grain of sand on it. And so your body is going to be protected just like the rest of the earth is. As soon as you disconnect from the earth and are no longer grounded, then your body is an antenna that <clears throat> attracts and absorbs and becomes electrified with these 60 hertz or, um, uh, electrical frequencies. Lisa's question is, can you make any general recommendations about what to look for in a pair of grounding shoes? Well, I've been working on it for 20, 23 years. I think we're getting close. We were kind of uh, where we will have uh, the grounded flip-flops by next spring. But as far as grounded shoes, there's the <clears throat> there's a few people out there selling them. I think there's a half a dozen companies that are selling some form of an electric, I mean, of a grounded shoe. Uh, you can go just put in anti-static shoes, uh, ESD shoes. Um, you know, like Reebok is the one that I know has the soft toe anti-static shoe, athletic type shoe. And for hiking and those kind of things, that's really a good product. Uh, it's what I use on occasion. <clears throat> and, um, uh, but the rest of them are more, you, you kind of have to go look at all of them. I mean, the, the earth runners, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're straps and, and a platform with a carbon point in them, uh, which as long as you're out on a trail, I'm sure they work, but you, some people don't, you know, don't have the, um, I mean, they, they have to strengthen their ankles, strengthen their feet a little bit before they go hiking. So anyhow, it's really, there's, there's plenty of things out there. I don't know. I can't really recommend one or the other. Um, I can just tell you what I do. And, uh, and, but anyhow, we've been working on trying to manufacture a grounded flip-flop. The reason, because we wanted something that everybody could afford and something that everybody's gonna buy two or three times a year anyway. And so they could experience earthing. Uh, and, and the most profound thing you can do with somebody is to put them in a pair of grounded flip-flops and have them stand on the grass um, <clears throat> or go out and stand barefoot on the grass. But you notice it more so than when you have one shoe grounded, one, one foot grounded, one foot not. Mm -hmm. Google <laughs> grounded shoes, ESD shoes, anti-static shoes. Uh, just to remind everyone, I am not monitoring the chat section on Zoom, so please submit your questions in the Q&A section. Uh, Mary's question, can I reverse heart failure? I have no clogged arteries. Um, <clears throat> again, a cardiologist would know this better than I, but, <clears throat> but the main thing earthing does is it reduces inflammation and prevents inflammation in the body. And, and, and allows the immune system to restore the body. And what it normally, I mean, the, the, the purpose of the immune system is return the body to normal every day. That's why we sleep, so the body can recover and restore. Uh, if, if that is not occurring, then, and you have inflammation in your body, then that can probably uh, contribute to what you were discussing there, the heart issue. Um, but I, I don't, I can't say that. The only thing I can say is we do have a couple of cardiologists. We'll be more than happy to take a note and send it to them and get you some feedback. But again, they would probably need to know more about what the condition actually is. But if it's, you know, like we say, you know, good food, a little bit of a good activity, sunshine and ground. Okay, we're going to go ahead and bring on another um, success story here. I believe we have Lorraine waiting in the wings. We'll go ahead and get Lorraine added. Let's see here. We should be getting Lorraine on any minute. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. So it looks like uh, no video prompt. So I'll just talk. Not a, not a problem. Oh, we hear you wait. loud and clear. Oh, maybe. Maybe there's a delay in the video prompt here. 
Did we lose you? No. Hmm. I don't hear LeRae. Uh, hello? Yes, yes, we hear you. Okay. <laughs> welcome. Maybe we can get video. I, uh, sorry. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Hello. So, um, I guess I'm just super excited to be here first. I think I am a self-proclaimed earthing advocate now. Uh, I haven't been doing it as cool. long as a lot of your panelists that you've had on. I actually started in March. Um, but my story is for decades and decades, I've gone undiagnosed with a lot of things and dealt with a lot of things. Long story short, in April, I was diagnosed as chronic Lyme disease. They think I've probably had it my entire life. And that is mm -hmm. what all my problems are. Mm -hmm. um, so I was blessed to get those answers uh, and work with a fabulous Lyme doctor. Um, I started with um, antibiotics immediately, even though he's a naturopath, he was like, you're so bad, we're going straight to antibiotics. Um, mm -hmm. I was taking upwards of three oral antibiotics and two IV antibiotics. I did 60 uh, sessions of IV antibiotics. Um, I have a port in my chest and taking oral antibiotics. I call it my superpower. Um, I can take five antibiotics and it doesn't mess my stomach up. <laughs> yeah. That is a superpower. <laughs> so, but if you put me on probiotics, the opposite happens. Mm -hmm. um, anyhow, I uh, went through some other IV treatments with my doctor and it just took a lot out of me. Um, very tiring as I'm trying to battle Lyme. And I have a bunch of the co-infections, the Babesia, the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, the Trench Fever, all of that kind of great stuff. Um, and when I was getting done, I told my husband, I said, I have earned a trip to the beach. I said, the only thing that makes me feel good is when I go to the beach. And I never could explain it, except for I would tell people, it's where I go to recharge my battery. I have yep. to go to the beach and recharge my battery. And I said, after this year of treatment, I'm done. And I really need to recharge my battery. And, um, so he, we went to the beach and while I was there, I felt wonderful. <laughs> I slept so good at night and I felt really good. And then we drove back home to Utah and it was almost as soon as we hit the border, I was like, "Ugh, I do not feel very good. <laughs> Everything is aching again. Everything is hurting. And um, I just happened to be meeting with one of my doctors like that, I came home on a Thursday, I met with her on a Monday and I, I was telling her, I was like, I felt so good at the beach and everything felt so wonderful. And she's like, you need to do earthing. And I'm like, do what? And she was like, you need to get an earthing mat and check out this, this video. And I went home and I immediately ordered the, I believe it's called the universal mats. Um, I ordered two of those. I gave my mom one who's 80. She felt fabulous when she was at the beach and then felt bad when she got home. We started with the mats and basically I have been doling them out. I just order them now and I hand them to people as I think they need them. I sleep on it every night. I have the pillowcase. I have the band. I have the patches. Um, I'm going actually back into treatment in July. And I spoke with my Lyme doctor and I was like, are you cool with me bringing my earthing mat in while I'm going through IV treatment? Plus we have to do colonics. And um, I was like, can I lay on the earthing mat? And he was like, absolutely. I want you to do it. I want to talk about it. Um, I want to see how you're feeling with doing it. Um, he, he thinks it's great too. He's like, I used to do it at my old practice and I may be getting back into it, but I've also been, I've been blessed enough to have somebody that's done the live blood analysis. And so we looked at my blood and um 20 minutes, I sat on the earthing mat for 20 minutes and he checked my blood again. And he was just like making me take notes on my phone. And he's just rattling off all the changes in my blood that had occurred in just 20 minutes of me earthing. Yeah. And so I've actually seen, I've been blessed enough to see it actually in action in my blood. Um, and now I'm just super excited to see what earthing and my Lyme treatment are going to do together. Um, because once I started earthing, my doctor had, he had said, I need you to stop your antibiotics. Let's see how long you can go without your antibiotics. And prior times in trying that I had gone a week, a week was the maximum I was able to go before my joints were hurting and all my Lyme symptoms flared back up. And 
when I was earthing and went off antibiotics, I went for two and a half months without taking or needing antibiotics went back and saw him. And now I've graduated to basically herbal antibiotics. So way more natural. And so I feel like I've come so far since March. <laughs> so well, I'm, I'm so glad to hear all of this. <laughs> this is a this is a lot this is a great uh, there's a lot there's a lot there and personally clint if you need anybody to volunteer for a lime and earthing study i am there for you i would love to do it i'm fascinated in just talking to different people what they've seen in my blood and the lime and there's so many questions on what is it doing and so yeah. I love that you intuitively knew that you felt good at the beach. You just didn't quite know why you just knew going to the beach. And, you know, we, there's a reason we feel good at the beach. We're grounded. We're connected. Yeah. The second I watched the earthing mm -hmm. documentary, I was like, Oh my gosh, I just, it's my thing. I always felt like every year I need to go to the beach and I live in a desert. And my whole goal now is to be like Clint and walk barefoot just out on the ground mm -hmm. and be able to hike barefoot and, tolerate yep. that. <laughs> yep. But so I, I can't say enough good. And like I said, I'm going to keep buying products. I'm going to keep giving them off to people. I all, because it's rewarding to me to hear them come and say, Oh my gosh, this changed my life. Oh my gosh, you were right. Oh my gosh, this is, I'm sleeping better than I've ever slept. And this is healing and this is feeling better. And it's like, yes, yes. Keep telling people. <laughs> I've well, heard you so much. I've heard your story many times, mm -hmm. and with uh, especially with the limes ladies, and uh, it's really important. And I think it's really uh, grateful. I'm grateful that you shared this because a lot of people need to hear this, and if they can't do anything else, they need to get to the beach or go outdoors and get grounded and stay there until they can figure out how to get things under control. But thank you so much for uh, sharing that. Thank yes, you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Wow, that was amazing. That's Alex. What, yeah, what a what a story. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, Deborah has a question about any usage contradictions um, regarding titanium dental implants. None. Awesome. Are there any acupressure, acupuncture points to use for the patches other than the feet or the hands? I have a sciatic notch and knee pain on my left side. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, acupuncture points, I would certainly experiment and play. I've recommended this a million times, but I've never been able to put together a program. Uh, but uh, yes, it's very important to use acupressure, acupuncture points. Very good. Rodney, with the tester, I'm finding that leather moccasins cause the grounding to move faster through my body than just with my bare feet, when my bare feet touch the mat. Is there any reason for this? Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure. Um, I, I'm not sure how this is being measured. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have enough information to make a, uh, an electrical explanation. Okay. Alice has a question about how many times can you reuse a patch? Can you use surgical tape to hold the patch onto your feet? And do the patches have an expiration date? No, the, the patches are mechanical and they'll last as long as you can use them. The only thing that really goes bad is, is that it loses its adhesive effect. Uh, a lot of people use them over and over again. They're designed for, you know, one one time use or uh, 24 hour, 48 hour use, just leaving them on. Um, so as long as you can make them stick, tape, whatever, uh, they will work. Yes. Sorry about that. Anastasia, her question is, I'm a skincare professional and I've been grounding through the earthing mat while providing facials to clients. And I assume I'm grounding them as well. Is that correct? 
That is absolutely correct. Joanne's question is, can grounding help with neuropathy? Uh, I have many reports of it helping with neuropathy. <clears throat> and again, that has to do with blood viscosity and um, fight or flight. You know, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a whole story there. It, there's usually a lot of um, um, chronically elevated sympathetic activity going on, meaning elevated cortisol, because that's what causes your muscles to push blood into your chest cavity so that you are prepared to run or fight. So sometimes there's um, emotional on uh, issues related to it, but the but when you get grounded, the blood uh, is going to normalize and it's going to be able to get in and out of the capillaries. And I've seen people uh, with neuropathy seen their feet uh, pretty much look normal in just a matter of 30 minutes with a patch on the bottom of their feet. And cold fingers, cold hands, same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna jump over to uh, YouTube. Linda is asking a question about birthing and fat necrosis. She had a fat grafting done three years ago. Can earthing help this? Uh, yeah, well, it will help <clears throat> reduce any inflammation that would be involved in the rejection process. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, I can't speak to it without knowing more about the particular situation, but I would think that uh, the one of the most important things in that situation would be to keep your inflammation at a, as low as possible, if not totally um, eliminate all the grounding, I mean, all of the inflammation in your body so that you have a better, your immune system can function more, more properly. Okay, we have somebody watching us on Facebook asking, can patches used for, be used to help with pelvic floor dysfunction? And if so, where should they be placed? I didn't hear that clearly. Can patches be used to help with pelvic floor dysfunction? Um, <clears throat> there's one way to find out. Get them patches out and put them where the, you know, where the, they put them as close to where the pain or issues are mm -hmm. and then put them on the bottom of the feet. And I think that you, know, you can experiment with these different things. You, you'll have a, a significantly improved range of motion uh, with your muscles and everything. So I think that um, I would just experiment. Alan is asking um, about an everyday use for using a lap what product would he get? Okay, laptops. Um, well, <clears throat> if, if you have a laptop, then the, the number one thing that I can share with you is try not to use the laptop when it's plugged in and charging. Uh, charge it, use it. Uh, because they do put out significantly high electric fields unless they are grounded. If they have a grounded cord, then it's not so much a problem, but there's certain brands out there that are very popular that don't have grounds on their laptops. Um, but as far as the laptop, um, I would say the Unimat, Unimat, you can either put the laptop on it and you can, if you're using a mouse, you can use your wrist. Your wrist would be on it. If you're typing, then your wrist would be on the uh, Unimat. Uh, you can sit on the Unimat, put it on the floor, put your feet on it, uh, all of these things. That are, I, I'm not sure what the, but related to the laptop, I assume, uh, use it for a desk mat or put it on your lap. Put it, if you're gonna be using the, or the small mats that we have, those where you get those two small ones would might be better for a laptop. Yes. Very good. Casey's question, any studies done on cirrhosis of the liver or any testimonials? Um, we have people who, I mean, for the liver to restore itself, you have to first of all stop what's causing the problem. Um, <clears throat> with that in place, then uh, grounding is going to normalize blood viscosity. It's going to reduce the inflammation. And the liver is where a lot of toxins and a lot of you know, inflammation, a lot of things go on. So I would say uh, it's definitely going to help the liver function better. 
Uh, as far as recovery, that takes, um, that I can't speak to for sure. Connie is asking if earthing will help with swollen feet. Absolutely. Put a patch on each one and 15 minutes later, you should be a new person. If you sleep with them overnight, then you should get rid of all of the problem, the related problems. Because if you have swelling in your feet, you have inflammation in your whole body. Okay. Uh, Linda here has a question. Um, will you be developing any smaller pads to take traveling? I used to have a smaller pad and I missed these as they were easy to throw in your bag or throw on your bed easily. We have the smaller pads at the on the earthing the earthing institute or no i mean uh, earthing.com i think um linda is referring to the uh those soft silver pads that we used to have as opposed to the universal mats i think oh okay we're talking about the, the smaller sleeping pads um <clears throat> we, we will not reproduce those because the silver doesn't last long enough the cost is too expensive uh, that we had to sell them for, and they just didn't last. We had a high return rate. They were totally unprofitable. So we won't be, re in, we won't be bringing that product back to market. This is an interesting question. Um, so the question is, I'm told the 360 sleep number beds are grounded and I will not need to use an earthing mattress or a pillow. What questions do I ask to ensure that the beds are really grounded? Um, well, you'd have to take a meter and go lay on it and find out if that in case is, is indeed the case. We have patents and licensing on all of those kind of things. We don't know of any bed mat or bed product called 360. Um, so it would be a knockoff of some kind. A lot of people just put, I mean, there was one group out of Italy, all they did was put a snap on the bed so you could connect a cord to it. To them, that was grounded. A lot of people don't understand grounding, but they know it's popular. So ask them about grounding and they say, of course it's grounded, but they don't know and they aren't. So you'd have to get it, you'd have to, I don't really know, send us some information on the product and we can tell you if it's grounded or not. Yeah. Okay, Shirley's question, if your hair is wet when you lay on the earthing pillow, does the wet hair make the head more conductive? Water certainly, I mean, your hair has a lot of mineral in it, the water would certainly make it more conductive. Okay, is there any relation between earthing and the vagus nerve tonality? Uh, yes, we, we have a study that's at the earthinginstitute.net. Uh, I call it the baby study. You need to put the proper name on it. But anyhow, <clears throat> that's where they uh, grounded about 30 preemie babies. Uh, when babies are born premature, they, they're, they're vagal tone. They're, I mean, they're in a very elevated sympathetic state. So they're, that's why they develop all the colics and you know, they're, they're not in contact with the mother and so on. So they're totally stressed in a uh, significantly elevated cortisol and so on. Anyhow, <clears throat> at that study it was done at the Hershey Clinic in Hershey, Pennsylvania by the, some researchers at the University of Pennsylvania. What they did was um, put a patch on the baby, each of the babies, and then they measured <clears throat> heart rate variability, vagal tone, you know, the tension tone of the muscle of the nervous system. And they had a significant change in vagal tone within 30 seconds. Kind of like when you go out to a stand barefoot on the earth. People can be all angered and mad and their life is just totally crazy, but they go out to a stand barefoot and all of a sudden they're laughing and smiling. So that's normalizing the vagal tone. Yes. If you go to the earthinginstitute.net and go to the research section, the study that Clint is referring to is number six on the list. Okay, um, rheumatoid arthritis in my wrist, is one patch on my palm and one patch on my forearm enough? Um, does the pain go away? 
when you do that. I mean, it, I'm asking, I guess this person doesn't have this yet. Uh, generally, one patch on the palm should be sufficient. The, the palms of the hands and the bottom of the feet are the most conductive part of your body. So if you patch the palm of your hand or the bottom of your feet, then as the blood goes, circulates through the body, then once a minute, it's gonna go uh, through that area, but it'll put out the fire in just a few minutes, uh, a flare, an arthritic flare. Uh, if the arthritis is, there's a lot of damage done, then um, you can put two on, no problem. You kind of have to, with grounding, you kind of have to let, listen to your body. If you have pain, patch it. Mm -hmm. Okay, this question is about a product. They, this person got a mattress cover two days ago and they're wondering when they get up in the morning, is it okay to leave the mattress pad plugged in all the time? Yes, <clears throat> it is connected to the earth and the surface charge of the earth is constant and there's no meter on it, there's no charge. <laughs> it's not like your electric, it's not connected to your electrical. So it's, you just leave it plugged in 24 seven. Russell, this is a question we get all the time. Russell's question, will you be coming out with earthing footwear in the future? We're coming out with the grounded flip-flops. We're gonna to try to keep them at a very low price, uh, like conventional flip-flops, so that everybody can afford them and so that everybody can experience earthing um, <clears throat> without doing something other than what they would normally do anyway, which is buy a pair of flip-flops. Um, so we're hoping to have those out by spring. And um, uh, we ordered a large quantity of them. And uh, so that's all we have. That's our only, our only real intention. Our, uh, as Earthing Institute, earthing.com, uh, we're about, a, a large part of our mission is education, teaching. And the only way we can really educate and teach somebody about earthing is they have to experience. Uh, it's an experiential thing. Once you experience it, then you understand it. But before that, you're saying, this is impossible. This is crazy. Get out of here. You're nuts. <laughs> but, but anyhow, that's the drive behind that. We, I would like to have had them out several years ago, but uh, we were doing the research and then everybody wanted to get the bed pads out because that's the single thing that has the most benefit for everybody. So we focused on that. So now, not that those things are starting to come together and a couple of the new products are coming together, then we will have uh, those flip-flops and they're really uh, speak for themselves. But, but we're, what we're trying to do is encourage. Well, here's, Nike told me one time, they said, we're not gonna ground our shoes, even though they were involved in one of our studies. They said, we're not going to do this. He said, when the people come into our stores and they, they want a grounded shoe, then we'll make them. And I said, okay. That's when I said, okay, I'm gonna get the, get the flip-flops. I'm gonna go to a couple of university campuses and start a fad. And then you, and people will go and ask for grounded shoes because they won't unless they experience it first. So that's part of our plan. Yes. Okay, Patricia has a question that we hear um, all the time from, from people who are just starting out. For a better and deeper sleep, which is the best earthing product to purchase and use? People are always asking us the best product. Well, that's why we came up with that starter kit. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's got a pillow, uh, a, a sleep mat, a universal mat, and the patches. So the idea is if you have any kind of chronic issues, you can use the patches to recover as quickly as possible. And then have laying on a sleep mat and a pillow cover. Those we developed because they're the best because you don't have to do anything except put them on your bed, put them on your pillow. And then every night when you come home, um, you just do what you normally do, lay down and go to sleep and you get the benefits of grounding without spending any extra time or effort or energy doing anything to maintain it. So I, I would highly recommend either the pillow and the, and the uh, sleep mat or a full sleep mat. Um, if it's a new person, maybe 
experiment with the starter kit. Nancy's question, can one use the patch on the knee or other parts of the body if they have a heart pacemaker? Yes. Hey, Bridget is a massage therapist. She says, I just purchased a mat to put on my massage table under the seat. My normal massage, massage sessions are 60 minutes. Do you think this will have any effect on how the client may feel after their session? If so, what might they experience and are there any contradictions for using the mat? Okay, um, we have about maybe 7,000 or more body workers using the universal mats on their tables mm -hmm. underneath their sheet. Most of the clients have no clue that they're grounded, but the reason that they're grounded or using it was because uh, body workers get a lot of inflammation quickly, I mean, early in their careers. And so what we were trying to do is to prevent, prevent inflammation uh, in the body workers. So by grounding the client, the client's grounded, it's gonna reduce their inflammation. So when you touch them as a body worker, then you're grounded and you're not absorbing any of the inflammation. When, you're, when they come to you, they're full of pain and they've got issues, they've got all, you know, all kinds of craziness going on. They lay down on your table and you may be the healthiest person in the world, but as soon as you touch them, then your body is going to ground them and give electrons from your body. They're gonna be absorbed by their body. They're gonna feel better and you're gonna feel worse. And we all know what that is, especially uh, body workers. But, but so anyhow, uh, the main thing is to, what is the patient going to the patient? Most patients are, are oblivious to it, but the number one thing that they have that they, that they experience is, a better massage, a better, better body work, because it's easier to work on them, because it take the grounding takes the tension off, the muscles are a little more, uh, a little easier to work, and, but anyhow, when they get up from the table, they're going to be, they're going to feel a lot better. They won't have any idea that grounding had anything to do with it, and they'll think you're one of the best uh, body workers in the world. <laughs> and uh, right. we have, and, and again, nobody. They come to get a massage. They didn't come to get an education or a lesson on grounding. So, uh, but on the other hand, they leave. And what you want as, as a body worker is people, people to come back. If they don't know anything about grounding, they'll surely be back. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, Lorraine, who we spoke to earlier, where she knew she just felt good at the beach, but she didn't know why. No, yeah. Yeah. So if the best place you can feel good is at the, on the massage table, that works. Yeah. Uh, Casey's question, do detailed instructions come with my first product delivery? They should have. Yep. All of our products come with a user guide that tell you how to connect it, how to check your outlet, has information um, there um, on how to contact us if you have any questions or concerns or anything. Yes. Okay, um, Terry, she says, um, albeit everyone is different, do you find that people with chronic pain require longer sessions or duration of grounding to see results? I was off my mat and pillowcase for two weeks and it was like I had to restart from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like this one lady we had on earlier. The, <clears throat> some people, uh, especially when you get a little bit older. Um, if you have chronic inflammation and it manifests as arthritis or joint pain or any of these number of these descriptions, uh, when you get grounded, what happens is when you first get grounded, it reduces the inflammation and that allows the, um, the immune system to go back to work and restore and repair and do its thing to return the body to normal. And, but a lot of this repair sometimes, if it's from years, then it takes a long time to, it's like, um, it takes the lungs five years to totally recover. It takes, you know, certain bones, you know, uh, three months, uh, joint uh, cartilage, I found that it takes around, you know, six months or, or long, but those are normal healing time frames. So, Anyhow, if you stay grounded, keep the fire out, then the immune system can go and expedite this and it'll happen faster. But
But if you're not grounded, if you're not, if you're ungrounded more than you are grounded, then it's going to take longer to recover. Mm -hmm. And then when you go with periods of ungrounding, then yeah, the fire, the fire just comes right back because you've never had complete recovery, complete healing, complete restoration. And the only way you get that is you have to, if you have any pain in your body, you need to be grounded. That's a message from your body saying, ground me, put the fire out so I can go back to recovering. Get grounded and stay grounded. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Clint. This has been a, a oh, great uh, I thought we were just getting started. Session. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. We had a ton of questions tonight. Um, and I am so sorry we couldn't get to all of them. All I can say is please log on early and get those questions submitted early. We do go in order of received. Uh, so we're here every Monday, 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, thank you to everyone who submitted a success story um, for consideration. And thank you to Chad, Antonia, Larray for sharing your amazing personal success stories with um, grounding and earthing. And to those who submitted success stories for consideration, we, you guys were all entered into a drawing to win a free product. And I'm happy to announce that Angela G has won the Unimat two pack. And uh, our customer service team will be contacting you directly to facilitate the shipping of that. So congratulations, Angela. And thank you again to everyone who submitted stories. If you haven't done so already, we highly recommend that you follow us on social media and subscribe to our newsletter and also our YouTube channel. Uh, this will make sure that you're in the loop regarding our upcoming sales and webinars and product announcements. Be sure to check out our Earthing YouTube channel where you can watch the Earthing movie as well as rewatch all of our Earthing Live webinars. Uh, we We'll be off next week in celebration of 4th of July. Uh, so we will not have our webinar next Monday, but we will resume uh, the following Monday. So thank you, Clint, very much. And um, thank you to everybody who submitted questions. And we hope you have a great night. Thank you.